you know, how we kind of serendipitously met and I wouldn't know you throughout without Tom Ferry and how all that is intertwined is always fascinating. to me. I love yeah. it. Welcome to this week's episode of Hey Homegirl. Hey, homegirls, this week we are going on a beautiful journey, personal growth with Alicia Sawikawa of Glen Allen, Virginia. Alicia has been a dear friend of mine for over a year. When I first had the idea of the Hey, homegirl community, I went and I chatted with her about some adjustments I needed to make in my life and how together we could help spread the word of empowering other generations of female realtors. Today, she's going to share with us what it is like to start a brokerage from scratch. She is not only a broker owner of a small independent brokerage, but she's also a Tom Ferry coach, a member of the Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership. She loves to read and she's a breast cancer survivor. Today, we are going to hear all about her successes in real estate, along with being a mom, three children, and an amazing wife. Hey, homegirls. Welcome to this week's episode. I'm so excited this afternoon to have Alicia with us. She's a real estate agent, a real estate broker, a coach, and just a phenomenal, well-rounded woman from Glen Allen area of Richmond, Virginia. So thank you so much for being with us. Happy to be here always and see your smiley face. Yes. So we met just about a year and a half ago. I had kind of been watching you from a distance from the Tom Ferry organization, and I knew that you were a coach and just a super powerhouse. So you were nice enough to invite me into your brand new office and just kind of hear more about what you're doing, which I think is so interesting. It's a little unique, especially for our market, which is, I would say, more conservative market. I think the Richmond area, it may be liberal blue state voting, but it is conservative in how we do things is what I would say. They're very steadfast in change. You don't see as much change happening here quickly is what I would say. I love that you're pushing the envelope though. A little bit. I mean, I think I've always challenged the envelope, even coming into the scene, um, wanting to do different things. And, you know, luckily in our Tom Ferry ecosystem family, which is our coaching world, they've always challenged the system, right? You know, try the new things, give it a try. And I've always been that. That was the number one thing when I was in sales back in the medical days, medical pharmaceutical days was my, my, all of my managers, everyone that I've worked with has always said, I was always the most coachable person because I'm willing to try. If you're willing, I'll I'll give it a try. It didn't work, then it's okay, but I'll try it, right? I'll try everything just to see, because maybe it'll work. And if it works, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It worked. And so I always kind of had that attitude. So someone gave me an idea like, well, that's a cool idea. Let me try and see if it works. And even if I got a little bit of a taste of success with like, whether it was door knocking or doing an ice cream truck open house, because you know, that was the days of the mega open houses or just doing some different things. I remember doing Facebook live when it first came out and I got all these people coming in the room and I got all excited and, you know, just willing to try, I think is the hugest piece. And in knowing that there's many different ways to do things that it doesn't always have to be that way. How did you make that transition out of the medical sales industry into real estate? Well, it's funny. I literally just did a training at our office today because we have a couple of people that are dual career and they're really struggling with, do I jump or do I not jump? And I don't know if I'm speaking to any of your audience, but what I've learned is that it's really hard to be married to two people, right? As far as I know, because I've never been married, but to one Well, to two people. (laughs) Yeah, but to be married to two. So I say that as a joke because- in a sense, when you are trying to do something so all encompassing like real estate and then have another full time career, and then maybe you're a mother or you're married and you have hobbies, you know, you're really splitting your focus. And as human beings, like we get, we are finally realized, I think there's been so many studies showing that the concept of multitasking is actually a law of diminishing returns and actually really hurts you. And so if you can learn to focus, like, you know, think about the blue flame on a fire that burns the brightest, the deepest, the heart you know, it's going to fire everything up and go so much further than let me have like little mini fires everywhere. Right. And so I think when you commit even subconsciously, if you're not willing to jump in and commit to a career, you will not give it your all. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing to risk, right? Oh, if it doesn't work out, I have my full-time job. So you won't. There's so many people that jump into our industry think, oh, I'll just do this part-time. So that's, I think, really important for people to hear. It is important because I think we do a very, it's a very low bar to entry, not not meaning there's lower bar people, but meaning like what business can you get into with such little money and such little skin in the game to be a certified licensed agent. It's mm-hmm. very little compared to even opening a franchise store or any type of business. You don't need as much as you would need in a lot of other licensing and business. Like even to be like some type of practitioner, you have to go back to school for two years and get certified. There's a lot more commitment to that. And so I think it's one of those things like they give you 10,000 options. You could do it online. You can do it at night, take your class, take your test. And then all of a sudden you're an agent and they make it seem, you know, we've done it to ourselves as agents too. We post the, it's the Instagram, um, 
reels of how awesome our life is. And yeah. so of course people see that and they see the glimpses of the wins and they see the glimpses of you going on vacation or the glimpses of you at this conference. They don't realize you're working 16 hour days and you're running off into the bathroom or to the, you know, back to your room to type up a contract, or you're running out of the, of a dinner with your family to check a voicemail. It's not, they don't see the that iceberg effect, you know, yes. I mean, we all yes. see it like mm-hmm. all they see is that top of that. And it's so true with so many entrepreneurs, but in our industry, we're taught from very early on before you probably even get your license that you're supposed to glamify it in some way. And that's not necessarily the route we should be yeah. going. I think we did it to ourselves. I, at the same token, you don't want to scare people to feel like that you can't handle it, right? Yeah. So in the name of trying to show people that you're successful at doing this career so that you can get clients, we almost make it oversimplified, right? So that oh, people yeah. don't think that there's anything to it. Mm-hmm. Because how many of your past clients, you've been in this industry a number of years now, how many of your past clients have called you and been like, Hey, I think I want to become a real estate agent now. I probably get two calls a year at least. You know, it's interesting when I get those calls, I get really excited. I'm like, Oh my God, that'd be amazing. You'd be amazing. If I think it's a good fit. I actually have a yeah. past client. That's one of our best agents and she's phenomenal. And I hold her, you should be an agent. I'm the one that said you should be an agent. Excellent. You know, your spidey sense comes out. Yeah. I, she just has it, you know, and it's sure enough, she's been just, she takes direction. She's just been fantastic. But then there are people, I ask the question this and like, Oh, that's cool. What, what about this business makes it interesting to you? Why do you, why do you want to be an agent? And the different responses are what will tell me if it, if it's something they really want to do or they don't want to do. So I, I never try to prejudge whether someone can do it or can't do it. Sometimes you'll be really surprised. Oh, super surprised. Right. And then sometimes the ones that you think will do it, do all the right things. They pass the test. They do everything. They, they do all the things and you're like, they're going to be amazing. But when push comes to stop, they don't want to pick up the phone and make the phone call. They don't want to be uncomfortable. No. And so those are the ones that I was like, oh, wow. So we've had to say goodbye to some people too. Too because of that. And I think it's a hard thing to do. You have to have necessary conversations in our business. And I think if you're not willing to have those, even with your clients, with yourself, with anybody, you're never going to move forward. Those, yeah. That's the biggest, I think, growth piece in having conversations, not skirting. Well, I don't want to tell them they need to lower that price is too high. And you're like, well, good luck. You're never selling a house then. <laughs> <laughs> so true. You know, it's necessary yeah. conversations, you know? Yeah. So you actually moved through that process. You had a different career path. You became mm-hmm. a real estate agent, mm-hmm. you know, fast forward time. Now you're running this brokerage and you're being able to pass that message along to your agent. Today we did a so weird timing, like literally that conversation. And I was terrified to leave. I left very, very big salary and the upper six figures and company car benefits, eight weeks vacation trips to Hawaii. I I left everything on the table to do this. I was the sole breadwinner kids, huge mortgage. I, and I, any standard now, if I look back on it, I was like, what was I thinking? That was not responsible. Like I (laughs) never have advised myself to do that. But I was like, I was so unhappy where I was. And so to me, it was worth the risk. So that's what it is. Everybody has. So if you're too comfortable, some people like to be comfortable. And I think there's no judgment on that. If you want to be comfortable and you like working and you want to have your happy hour and you want to play games, your neighbors and just hang out and go to the pool and have a simple, not like if you just want to be chill. Oh, that's great. I have no shade. That's you said to you, you got to honor who you are. You can't betray yourself because if you don't have it within you to do the hard stuff, then that's not for you. Right. That, that's what it is. Sarah, I think there's so many people that think they're supposed to want the hustle and what they, they hear that they want it. They are supposed to have all these things and want to have a business. And I hear my friends and my neighbors all the time say to me, Oh my God, you run this business and so cool. I wish I had my, I like, well, why? Like, what about this? It's so great looking to you. I'm curious. Is it because it looks cool or do you really want to do the work that comes along with it? You do make it look cool. So well, I you should make it look fun. I, well, I love it. It is fun yeah. because it's fun for me and I'm mm-hmm. living my truth and I'm living yes. my dream and I'm living all the things. That's what they're seeing inside of me. They're seeing me all lit up inside because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But if yes. that's not who you are, you're betraying yourself, right? That's the mm-hmm. ultimate thing. It's fast as women, as we grow and approaching the age of the certain age they talk about. And I'm like, huh, this is very interesting. Like I, I used to be scared of that number. And now I'm kind of like, it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Right. I'm going to be 50 in three years. So I'm sitting here saying to myself, like, okay, I think we're yeah. the same age. So are you 75 or 76? 76. Yeah. I'm 75. 75. So I will reach it before you. So I'll let you know how it goes when I hit okay. it. Sounds good. But I think it's going to be amazing. I'm very excited about it. So for um, me, I feel like been, just like you, it's been such a year of growth for me. 
and transformation that I'm really embracing these next couple of years of life. And I'm just so proud of the accomplishments that I've made and the transitions I needed to make to find a little bit more happiness in my life. See, and that's what I love. I love hearing that because you have that choice. We all have a choice. And I think that what people run around and think, I don't have a choice. You have a choice. Every day is a choice. A a choice. You don't have, I, I, and that's something that I think I didn't, I think I was living in my own chokehold. And I remember Tom Ferry says it all the time. I remember him saying that over and over again at Elite Retreat or some, you guys are on your own chokehold. Stop chokeholding yourselves. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? And then I was like, right. We're the ones making the drama. We're the ones making it hard. Yes. On- we're the ones creating these scenarios that are not even true that are making like torturing ourselves. And then Tony Robbins talks about that. Like we're choosing the state of suffering, right? It's either you can choose to live in a state of suffering or survival, or you can choose to be in a beautiful state. It's just a flip. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm going to be over here. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to look this are. way where it's beautiful. I don't want to look at this shit over there. That's how I see it. <laughs> how did you build your business so quickly? Because you went from a very high paid executive level job into real estate and you were the main breadwinner of your family. You had little kids and you had to transition and flip into this new industry. how did you get it started so quick? I think it's, I, ne- I didn't have money. So obviously it was sweat equity. I didn't even have a CRM. I just, I didn't even know what, know what that meant. So I just had a spreadsheet. I actually just started writing names. I had this whole notebook yeah. and, I, and I literally went through my entire Facebook, my entire phone book. And I started feeling, I just out of my own survival mode, I didn't really read anything. I just was like, I got to get people's information. Yeah. So I went in and started filling the pieces out. Like once I got my business cards, I was like, what's everyone's name? I had everyone's names. I had some people's phone numbers. I didn't have other people's phone numbers. I had some people, you know, it was like all mismatchy. Yeah. So I'm going to go in and fill everything out. And then once, if people were willing to give me their email address and their phone, their address, then I would mail them a couple of cards. And I would say, Hey, do you have time to meet me for a cup of coffee? Cause I just want to like, tell you what I'm up to see what you're up to. Let's catch up. It's been like, I didn't care. Like I, one of the biggest objections I had from my agent was like, I just feel weird. I haven't talked to them since high school and I'm 30 and I'm calling them. I'm like, who cares? Like I'm telling you maybe one out of 10 will be like, why are you calling me? But the other nine will be like, sure, let's do it. Isn't that worth it? 100%. Like they're so focused on the one loser that's going to be like, oh, oh." and I'm like, well, you don't want them anyways. Get them out of your list. Delete, delete, be thankful. I clean my database out all the time. Yeah. You got to be, you got to be, you have to earn the spot in my database because I do a lot of stuff for my people. So you got to earn a spot. Like, I don't feel like I should just put people in there to put them in there, you know? So it was really on that. My very first deal was my mom's friend, right? Korean lady. Oh. It was challenging, but she bought a house. I literally went to see Bill Pipes. Bill Pipes did, he was recruiting for sales edge. I went to this free thing, like, let me go. And I signed up for sales edge. And that day we did karate chopping and all that. And I was like, I'm fucking selling a house today. And he was like, Michael's like, go. (laughs) And I booked, I was like, we're going to see this house, Mrs. Chang. And she's like, okay. She wrote her, we wrote an offer that night. Oh, that's awesome. A $700,000 cash offer. And we, we, she closed on that house. So my first deal was like a month into it. I wrote my first offer a month into it, closed it. And then it just started. And then my aunt, my uncle tragically passed away. My aunt needed to sell her house. She used me. It was like that. Like yeah. little, little I just, you know, I did door knocked, um, did Fizbo's. One Fizbo that I got, they are like, they're like my parents. So oh cute. Lenny and James. And I literally saw it and I went by and I'm like, hey, I saw you're out here. And I saw it's for sale by an owner. And he was like, well, hello. And he was like, so sweet. And I said, well, he's like, well, we're going to sell it ourselves. I said, oh, okay, well, would you like me to walk around and offer you any suggestions? Like maybe you need some help with some stuff. He's like, okay. And so I had my little, I was just being, I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. So I'm like walking around and telling him things to do. And he, um, all of a sudden he was like, you know what? Maybe we will sell it with you. It just seems like a lot of work. It's like, yeah, I would love you. I would love that. So I had everything. They signed it and I sold their house. But actually the buyer didn't come to the closing gap table he wants. So I had to resell it twice. Sell it again. And then I helped them for that. And my, and my goal, I'll have a never forget my goal and Sebastian, like seven-year-old shoveled the driveway. Cause it snowed. Like we did all these things for them. So he saw how hard we worked for them and, but we sold it again and it went through the second time and they had to put a new roof on the house. I mean, it was a lot of stuff. And I think they realized in the end, thank God we had you at least to navigate. Someone broke into their house. They had a, a squatter that came in like a homeless person. So we, had to, we had to get them out of there. I mean, this is the craziest deal you ever could imagine happened to them. Yeah. Which we have so often. I mean, some of the stories that we could tell people just would not even. They right. But then, yeah. And so then you think you were going to do all that yourself. 
like what, you know? Yeah. So we got through it and then, you know, they just became dear friends of ours. And like, when I was sick, they came and brought me food in the hospital. When I had a baby, she knitted me a blanket and yet meeting her daughter who, who I adore her. And I think I remind her of her daughter. Cause we have very similar personalities, Allison. She's lovely. And I met her son and I helped her son and daughter-in-law with sell and buy a house. And then I've helped Allison's neighbors and her friends. And it's just like, I'm like part of their family now. Mm -hmm. And had I not gone up to that FISBO, I never would have met them. Yeah. You wouldn't have those relationships. No. In your life. So that's kind of like a lot. I have a lot of stories like that. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So that's how I grew my business. So I follow the model of genuinely coming from a place of how can I help someone today? Who needs my help today? Who can I help move forward? Whether it's personal, professional, I just want to help people. And I think coming from that service of, I, like, I feel so blessed in my life and I feel so full of love that I know that other people need that. And I'm like, where can I help someone today? Now, some days I'm like annoyed. Yes. Like we all go through and you give so much of yourself and some people rob you of things, but I think that's on me also as a lesson of, okay, where do I need to create a boundary for that? Mm -hmm. You know, so those are lessons as well, but I think overall it's worked out for me. You know, I can, I can only count on a, a few times where I was like, that was so bad that I wanted to like quit yeah. like very few times. I mean, the, the hard are hard, you know? Yeah. Thank you for listening to today's episode. We're not quite finished yet, but as the home girl of your hometown, I would love to pass the mic to you so that you can share your story and some of your secrets with the homegirl community. To apply, please go to howtobeahomegirl.com in the show notes. When you're but, starting each day with that mindset of service, it probably helps you to do the uncomfortable things like making calls if you need to be prospecting or knocking on doors or visiting FISBOs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's one of those things too. I always feel like someone needs me. I'm convinced myself of that. Like they need my magic and I'm like, I got to get out there and give it to them. They just don't know it yet. Yes. And I think it's true. And I think that, you know, I'm love to laugh. I love to laugh. So if you have a sense of humor, we're going to be best friends because I am <laughs> silly and goofy and almost like inappropriate of all times. I'm like, if you can have like that laugh or you can't breathe and it, I, that kind of like laughter and joy in my life, I'm like, why not? Like life is so serious. There's so many hard things that if you can't laugh and have a good time, like what is the point? I don't know. I just don't get so serious. I'm like, I'll be so serious. Even at the funeral, I'm like, why are we so serious? Why does grandma look like that? Like, <laughs> I mean, just have to like laugh because for the love of God, like, why is it so serious? Like there's enough sadness and grief, you know, yeah. but um, I do think that I'm very self-deprecating in a good way, but I know like, meaning like I can laugh at myself and I can make fun of myself and not take myself seriously. I think some people in this business are so serious and you're like, it's not that it's just a house. Yeah. I dealt with cancer patients. This is just a house. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One it's of my special, very good friends right? is a funeral homeowner. And when I have a bad day, I am constantly reminding myself that my bad days are not like his bad days, <laughs> you know? So no. And I actually, this is really crazy. I have a new agent. She escaped North Korea, North Korea. And like the Underground Railroad. Yeah. For real. And, and so, yeah, in your area, Glen Allen, you have a very high Korean population, correct? It's actually really diverse, not just Korean. It's like all di all ethnicities. It's yeah. so diverse right here. That's almost shocking because my husband, Michael is from Manhattan. And when we moved here from North Carolina, he was really concerned that there wasn't going to be diversity for our children yeah. and us being mixed cultures and stuff. I think he didn't want our children to have prejudice or, you know, he didn't know, like, you know, and then when we moved to her, like, Oh my God, it's like everybody. And it's because Capital One is based out of here, the bank and like VCU. And we have some of the top ranking schools. So all the people that are, they want to be, so all the smarty pants people and all this stuff. So you have a, we have a lot of diversity in Glen Allen because of that. So for that woman that has now joined your brokerage, because fast forward, you know, all this time, now you go and you open this brokerage, which mm -hmm. we can touch on in a few minutes, but this agent basically escaped from North Korea. No, Fast that's like, no, that my friend that's North Korea, North Korean. Yeah. She escaped North Korea in 2004. Oh, okay. And now and she's living in. She moved, she escaped in 2004, went to China through Korea. Yep. Lived in China for two years and then came to the US, met her husband. She escaped to New Jersey. I'll let you know. Okay. So she met her husband who is 
immigrant also from Korea, but came here since 12 years old. So he speaks both fluent, married him since then. I don't know what their deal is, but they have two children and she lives in Halsley, which is like a, an area in the Lothian. It's very nice, very nice yeah. neighborhood, but they bought a seafood market and she ran the seafood market with him and made all this money sold the seafood market on her own. I met her through a mutual friend, a connector friend. I'm going to do the connectors are everything in our business. Yeah. Yes. And Mimi was the one that like, I met her through Mimi. We all had a dinner and randomly she messages me like, Hey, Alicia, I got my license. I'd love to come work at your brokerage. I was like, what? What? what did you, when did she never called me? It's done. You know, she's a doer. You know, she's a worker. She's bee. already doing. She's already written her first contract on her own. And there we have on, through the company, a partner with side, we have a special proprietary app and do how you do things. I was trying to walk her through some stuff and I looked at it and pretty much it was all right. Remember English is second language. Yes. Yeah. And she figured it out. And then I said, well, when your buyer signs everything, I'll show you how to generate the offer so you can send it over. Right. And it was late. And she's like, okay, we'll do it in the morning. She gets up really on Sunday. I did not get up at six. So she's texting me at six. I don't see it till like eight. And then she writes another, she's like, oh, I, I watched the video and I figured it out and I sent it out. And I was like, I told my going husband, he's like, yes, he's like this. <laughs> <laughs> and my younger daughter, you'll love, you'll appreciate this. My 14 year old, you know, she always says W that means winning. Yeah. W I like to, I do that now. W. <laughs> well, that's so good. And I'm all good. agents learn at different speeds, but it's just amazing to me that she could have the background that she has. And she knows, like she knows she needs to self and she's doing it. Mm, she is yeah. doing it and doing it. Yeah. Like, so let's talk about your, your brokerage because it's a little bit different. Uh, yeah. Than- you know, there's so many different broker models out there. And that's one of the things about this business that over the last probably eight years has really interested me on how brokerages work, how franchises work, things like that. But you're partnered with Side. So tell us a little bit about Side, because that's not one that too many people know about, but it's super innovative. It is innovative. And the name is on purpose. So side means that they're on the side, they're on the sidelines. So it would be like a, a, a silent partner, mm-hmm. right? It's just like people that have ownership in different businesses, but they're not in the storefront. They're not really there. So side is the power behind our brokerage. Mm-hmm. So like you'll see different brokerages. So let's say you have a team, like uh, let's say with Alicia and company, I was with Long and Foster before this. So I always had to say Alicia and company at Long and Foster. I yes. couldn't just be Alicia and company. And so I, when I was growing the team and was going through some scaling and growing and I knew what I wanted to grow, I felt very constricted where I was at. And it doesn't mean other people are, that was my own personal feeling. And I just was not getting what I needed. So I started opening my mind up after being somewhere for eight years. I was like, what if, like, what if I looked around? Let me just see. And I didn't really see other options. And I thought, well, what if I just did my own thing or made a move? So I kind of like, at one point I said in 2021, that summer, I was like, you know, I'm going to start. I'm going to be open-minded. I'm going to be open-minded to seeing, other. maybe I'll just take a look. I knew certain things. I knew it was not meant for a virtual model. I knew that the whole EXP and for me was not a fit yep. for me. And so I was like, okay, what, what do I want? What is important to me? And I knew I was going to have to get more office space because they would not give me any more office space and I wanted to grow. Mm-hmm. And so that alone, I knew that was going to be a cost. So I was like, okay, if I have to have my own office space anyways, maybe I should just do my own thing. So then I was like, okay, maybe next year. So it wasn't like this whole thing coming together, but it was never a grand master plan of me when I started to have my own brokerage or even have a team. I didn't know what that was when I started. Yeah. So things kind of just evolve like anything else in life. But I think it's, it was just a natural progression. And I met a gentleman named, and I didn't think I was going to be a coach. And this is all the things I didn't think are, are as is it's yeah. Dave Higgins, who's coached by Emily as well. And she kind of brought us all at a dinner for the leadership conference in Nashville that year. And I happened to sit next to Dave. And I remember him from doing elite virtual because we were partnered in those little rooms, you know, yes. and I was like, it's you. And he's like, it's you. And then we were laughing because we both were on the, we both do the Peloton and we we're just laughing and Michael was there and Michael goes, so tell me D- Dave about your, your team. He's like, well, I'm a white label. I have a white label brokerage and Michael's from Manhattan and the Manhattan world. Like when you're a restaurant and fashion, white label is a very common knowledge and language. And what that means, it would be like how Target and Costco, you know, that you'll see Kirkland brand, you'll see yes. that's white label. Okay. They put there, but it's something else that makes it. Yes. So as soon as he heard white label, it kind of, I could see a glimmer go, I could see a, a, a switch go off. I looked over Michael and he goes, huh. I could see him thinking, cause that's, yeah. You know, so we go to this dinner, we come back from the dinner and I, it's already out of my head because I'm like a butterfly. I'm like, well, what's over here? I'm like a squirrel. I'm already <laughs> like, I'm not even like thinking about yeah. this. 
he's over there crunching the, the processing is going. So we go back to the room and he's like, babe, babe, look up that side. He had it down. Look up side. I said, look up what? The side, the company side. What are you talking? I didn't even remember what he was talking about. And so look it up. I looked it up. Sure enough, their whole website came up and I put my name in. I gave in, I, I just put an inquiry in and the guy called me. He's like, oh, it's so interesting. We just got licensed in the DMV area, which is district, you know, DC, Maryland, and Virginia that they call it DMV, but I'm in central Virginia. So I don't really, we're like different parts. So he was like, let me, you know, he put a call and we did a zoom. And it was like, this is interesting that you reached out. Cause we just got licensing here and we're expanding. And this is what, this is the model and the recruiter. And we had a one-to-one -one and then we had a discovery day and it just kind of all evolved. And that's how it happened. And what they do actually is they, they handle the legal part. So a lot of small brokerages will hire a principal broker on the side and to have a salaried principal broker is is six figures easy. It just is. And they're salaried. They want to run the brokerage. It's, you know, it's not necessarily the big, like, you got to find the candidate fits the, the position and sometimes they want to sell. So we were like, I don't want to do that because I didn't want to go sit at the board. I didn't want to, I don't want to do that stuff makes me, my stomach hurt, like dealing with yeah. lawyers and law. I just not for me. And so when I heard they offer that, they give you a business manager. There's a back, there's a platform. So they give you tech. So I don't have to pay for the brokerage level of every single thing to help. They handle errors insurance. They handle the legal. I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is what I'm talking about. Like this allows me to coach still. It allows me to be a leader and, and retain and train my agents and focus yeah. on things that are important and all the logistics of the things I don't want to do anyways are handled. So that's how, that's how the partnership came. It's not cheap, but it wouldn't be cheap if I had to pay for it. Oh. Card. So if, only you, if you were doing it all yourself, it was, I, I believe that their model allows low that want to have an independent business, be able to collapse time in yes. really starting your brokerage in that way and still retain a network of people to have, because yes. when you're an independent boutique brokerage, if you don't have that franchise to back you up, it can be a really lonely world. It is. And it is. I mean, it's, it's one of those things too. If you don't know how to connect with people. So like, I'm already still struggling with that piece. And I will be completely honest to say that too, is that there's still not enough time in the day for mm -hmm. me to talk to all the people I need to talk to, to be doing all the communities to get known plus do all the things. It's a lot still. Yeah. So I can't even imagine if I had to wear those other hats on top of that. And I have director of operations. I have a full-time marketing director, a full-time listing coordinator and office admin. And I have a TC that handles every one of the files. And it's even with that. Yeah. It's, it's too much. Yeah. It really the compliance well. part of it was the part for me where I was just like from 2007 to, two, to 2022, I was happy to put that part of it aside for me. It it just wasn't where I wanted to focus my time anymore. Yeah. But when you are the principal broker, that's the yes. most important piece of it, you know? Well, it's interesting because technically we are a DBA. So since yep. we are a DBA, we can market and I have a firm license. The collaborative is the firm license on its own. And I, I just, I'm the owner and, you know, it's separate me. And then Will is just marked as our, you know, principal broker. And then they can share and we have masterminds and all that kind of stuff and business managers. And, you know, there's different things and there's beginning talks of potential partnerships with other brokers. And you just don't ever know you can merge and grow and you know you don't know what this could be it opens your mind to different things because you're kind of part of the same family yeah you and know? that's why I wanted to touch on it today because I think it is just a different model mm -hmm. and it's important for me that agents understand that there's so many different options out there as long as yes. you're willing to invest in yourself and grow yes. that mm -hmm. is the biggest key I think I always tell people if you start thinking that you know everything or if you reject something because you don't know it yeah. I don't know that I don't like it okay, but you don't even know what it is to not like it. Yeah. So I think that that's not the best way to look at things. So I think if anything, challenge yourself to probably be like, if some, if you don't like something, why you don't like it? Yes. What's not like it? Yeah. Is it because you fear it or is it because you don't know what it is? It's easier just not like, not like it because that's where vision comes from, right? That's where the divide is, is the unknown makes people uncomfortable and they don't like the unknown. It's their fear and the fear provokes them to go, mm, I don't want it. That's so like good. It. I could keep you on this podcast all afternoon, this, but I am not because you are just so good. You're so good. And you have so much information to share. So thank well, you. Well, I love talking to you and I like talking. Apparently, it's what Michael says. You talk a lot. Like, there's a but lot you, of because you're passionate. Yes. Right? Like, <laughs> the most successful agents are the ones that are obsessed with our industry and you're obsessed yes. with sharing it with other people. And that's what you always bring to the table. Yes. You know, and I will tell you, you also have to get the books since you are reading different things. When you get, 
when you listen to that thing, I highly recommend these two. This one's first. Okay. The untethered soul. Love that. And then this is the follow. Okay. I'll definitely get those two. Your mind will be like, yeah, I read this one twice back to back because I was like, I need to read that again. Yeah. That's how I am with pretty much everything. You're like, wait a second. Let me read that. Let me, let me submit that in my, yeah. All right. Listeners, you got to leave you with. (laughs) That is is a little extra today because we are talking about all things mind expansion, which is At the end of each episode, I always ask for the female listeners that we have, what is one piece of, you know, empowerment advice that you would give them in this crazy industry? In our real estate industry yeah, or in just our, life? Yeah, in, our real- in our real estate industry, when things get sped up and you feel like it's out of control, slow down. That would be what I'd say. Learn by slowing, just slow it down. Like, like when a negotiation gets crazy, you know, when people get off at a frenzy and crazy, crazy, it just slow it down. That is the advice. Why are you rushing? Like there's no rush. And that's with everything. Like there's no rush. Like, why are you in this competition with this agent that's been doing it 10 years? Why are you in a competition with a man who doesn't have children to worry about? That's a single man that doesn't anybody worry about but himself. You know, like, don't, I'm like this. Under the next. Yeah, just slow. I was like, slow it down. You're, there's like a thing that says, I should have a quote, slow down, calm down, don't worry don't hurry, trust the process. And it's a quote, it's a card and it's sitting up there. And it's like, it's a reminder to us as women because we are always rushing. Hurry up, just slow down. That's huge for women in general. Don't you agree? I completely agree. Slow your roll. That's why it's so good. You know, that's best advice I can give any, and that works for every age. Just slow down. It's going to be okay. Even breathing. Let's take a breath. Let's slow down. Like when everything is like that, you, you're, you got a lot of clarity about you. Super clarity, right. super, super clarity. Clarity you know, comes. That would be my number one advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Because I know that there's yeah. listeners out there that need it right now. You know? I think they need it. I think we're in such a fast moving age of now, 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 short attention span. So instead of slowing down, you think you've got to keep up. Everyone's running on this adrenal gland. That's why everyone's so tired. I think because you're just going, yes. going, going and going faster and going faster. Remember that from the Willy Wonka? And that's how I feel like everyone's going. Like you're like, oh my God, I'm not, my pet's going to pop off. You know, how about you just slow it down? Like, you know, when you and change. That's perfect in negotiations. Like I tell my girls all yes. the time, I'm like, yes. do not be the first, do not reply right away. Like you wait, you just say what you have to say and then be quiet. Because in slowing it down, you don't say the wrong things. You don't speak out of emotion. You don't speak out of response. You don't, you listen to understand not because you're slowing it down. And I think there's so much to that. That's why I say, just slow it down. And if you slow it down, then your brain can process and think about it. Is this really the right, you know what I mean? Like, I think so much is made, mistakes are made in the rush. It's in a rush. And, and if someone tries to put you in a rush, like da, 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 maybe it's not for you then. Completely agree. That's, don't you agree? What's the rush? Why are we rushing? For what? Like our life is so fast already as it is. Don't rush it. Don't rush your children. Don't, there is no deadline. Like all the new moms. That's what I'm saying. Like, just slow it down, man. Slow your roll. Yeah, it goes by so fast, way too fast. Right, that's the best advice. It works for everything, girl. Yes, it does. Totally does. Thank you. Oh my god, it's so fun to chat with you. You're such a doll. I was. It was. This has been. You were. And I got that email. I was like, oh my god, this is so fun. I always stuff like this makes my heart full. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's Friday. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Bye. Bye, girl.